Flying a drone indoors is hard, but it can also be really useful, especially if you're doing real estate photography and you want to add little video tours. Rather than having to buy a big gimbal or a crane or a boom to get different shots, you can get all of that with a drone and, well, a lot of practice and some safety measures. So let's talk about what you need to do to do it as safe as possible. Even if you're near an airport, it's generally okay to fly indoors because the FAA does not consider indoors to be navigable airspace. Hopefully your app will let you still fly. First of all, you need to be a really good drone pilot. Like you need to know how to actively fly your drone without the use of any electronics, without being able to use the screen. So follow my how to fly a drone guide and do that all without looking at your screen and without using any sort of GPS help here. Because once you get indoors, the GPS isn't gonna work. So put it into Addy mode and learn how to fly it in all orientations, including facing you and facing sideways. And that's gonna help out a lot. One of the things that makes flying drone indoors so hard is that even though it's still inside, there's prop wash. These props start spinning and suddenly it's very windy inside. <laughs> You'll notice all the papers in the room are gonna go flying, your hair will be moving everywhere. Prop wash is also coming back and hitting the drone and pushing it in weird directions. It's not gonna work like it does outside where it just stays here and you can walk away and it's gonna keep flying by itself. You need to actively work to keep it in the same location so it goes without saying that things like a nice little orbit or a nice straight flight could be a lot more difficult. You need to be a really good pilot. So some safety measures, you see that I have prop guards on here. That's because I don't totally trust myself. Things can go wrong and it can suddenly crash into a wall or something. And you know, if it crashes into a real estate client's cabinetry and suddenly you have to replace a cabinet, that could end up being really, really expensive, costing way more than your drone. So this little thing, while it's not foolproof, it's definitely gonna help in case you do bump into something, it's gonna reduce that damage. Prop guards are lame. I hand land all the time and I'm cool with it. I'm also gonna assume that it's gonna fly directly towards anything living in the rooms. Watch out. Sorry, it got super unstable as it got closer. <laughs> So I'm gonna get out all unnecessary people and any sort of pets or anything soft that might be damaged. It can be really dangerous. To minimize the risk of crash and damage, fly as little as possible. That means before you take off, plan your exact shots. I don't wanna see you up in the air trying to figure out what a good angle is. Learn to imagine it, know exactly point A to point B, and then get it down as quickly as possible. Right before you take off, turn off GPS mode. Put it into Addy mode if your drone has that. Also, you probably wanna turn off obstacle avoidance. I know it sounds like obstacle avoidance would be something that you want, but in these drones, the obstacle avoidance is not precise enough. So it will detect something within like six feet and stop you from flying in that direction. And that's actually worked against me a few times because it'll start drifting in the wind and I'll need to pull it back this way, but it will see an obstacle over there and it will refuse to move in that direction. So I find it much better just to turn all of that off and rely on my piloting skills. If your drone supports visual positioning, you should leave that on. That'll help even without GPS. Once you're in the air, if you wanna get usable shots, you're gonna to wanna to hold the sticks as still as possible. Don't be jerking the sticks around while you're in the middle of a flight. Don't expect to get a smooth shot where you're tracking left and right like that. No, you're just gonna plan smooth movements that are either straightforward like this or nice little orbits, but just hold the sticks completely still throughout the completion of the movement and then go back and repeat that process a few more times. Back at the editing bay, you can pick that one clip that happened to be smoothest, but you want your drone shots to be nice and smooth and any movements are gonna wreck that. Even if you use tripod mode or beginner mode or something else, any sort of movement on the stick is gonna be unacceptable. So just handle that in editing and realize that even if a shot looked smooth, it might not turn out smooth. Multiple takes always helped. Do not use any auto flying techniques. Do not let the drone take off automatically. It might fly up too high and crash into something. Don't try to use the built-in uh, quick shots or motions because it cannot see in every direction and it will just suddenly crash into a wall and hurt somebody or wreck something. Do not use those gestures where you like wave and try to point around because again, that's auto flying and it can't see where it's moving necessarily and it can crash into stuff. You are flying it using only your sticks, no GPS. Some of you are gonna fire up your drone and you're gonna get a GPS lock and you're gonna think that you're okay and maybe it will be fine. But what can also happen is that halfway through your flight, it'll lose GPS and then start to wander and 
because it wasn't already in that mode, you'll be caught off guard. So please don't use it. Wi-Fi interference can be a problem, especially on drones that use Wi-Fi transmission like this Mavic Air, because lots of homes are filled with Wi-Fi networks. So if you find that interference is a problem or if you just wanna be safe, you could put your phone into airplane mode. You could have people, the owners of the house, shut down the Wi-Fi networks just to try to free up a few frequencies to make sure you have a nice clean signal. Also plan to get another source of sound. Maybe you'll just play music behind your drone shots, but this is gonna ruin any sort of audio that you have. So after you do your shot, if you do want some ambient noise or if you're mixing it into a film or something, be sure to record the audio separately and afterwards, but think ahead, you know, if you're flying near uh, a indoor waterfall or something, collect some water sound or other ambient noise that you can use to match up to the video footage. Okay, hope this was useful. Subscribe to the channel to see tutorials on how to fly drones like this. We have some planned and coming up. See lots of uh, tutorials on how to fly and get great shots. And if you have any follow-up tips or questions, add a comment down below. Thanks, bye. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Are we so like the straight man?